Hi, this is Pastor Steve of North Hollywood First United Methodist Church, and I welcome you to our online virtual worship service. And we gather today after another eventful week of headlines. Whether it was the explosion in Beirut or scouring the headlines to figure out what's happening with the pandemic and children going to school and what it is like for the recovery package or stimulus packages. It's a weird year and it's been another weird week. And we know what it's like when things don't add up. And we know what it's like when things fall apart. But I hope that this morning's worship service is going to remind you that in every situation, you are not alone. That God is with you. And that God is still at work, even if you can't see it. We are a church that welcomes everyone. And when we mean everyone, we mean everyone. It doesn't matter where you're from, what your history's been, who you love, or the color of your skin, or the country that you've come from. You are welcome in our midst and in our family. So let me greet you with a warm virtual embrace. And let us join together our hearts and minds as we sing our opening hymn, hymn number 103, Immortal, Invisible, God Only Wise. Gracious God, we give you thanks for this day and for calling us here to your place of worship. We gather to praise your name for your faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Signs of your faithfulness are all around us. Love, mercy, forgiveness, new life, and the gifts of your Son, Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. Help us claim your faithfulness as we seek to increase our faithfulness to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And if you'll now please take a look at your screens, we will join together in the call to worship. Give thanks to the Lord, for God is good. We proclaim here and now the marvelous works of our God. Let our hearts leap for joy, O people of God. We proclaim here and now the marvelous faithfulness of our God. God's ways are not our ways. God's works are too wonderful to behold. We proclaim here and now the marvelous works of our God. Hey kids, well today we're going to talk about trusting God. And I want to ask you who it is that you trust. 
each day we face difficult situations where we have to answer tough questions or make really hard choices. And we often find that we ask ourselves, who can we trust? Well, the answer is Jesus. Just like back in Jesus's day, people knew that they could trust him to make them well. Well, today we can go to Jesus knowing that he's going to make all our situations a little bit better. When do you have a hard time trusting God? Is it perhaps when something is really difficult that you don't want to do? Or is it when you're scared or confused about the future? Or maybe it's just when you don't know what's happening and what's going to happen next. Well, God wants you to trust him even when you don't understand. In fact, in Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 through 6, it says this in the message version. Trust God from the bottom of your heart. Don't try to figure out everything on your own. Listen for God's voice in everything you do, everywhere you go. He's the one that will keep you on track. We can always trust God to work things out for the best. In fact, we can take steps of faith one day at a time, and eventually we will see that God keeps his promises in surprising and fantastic ways. And know that God will not leave you alone. In fact, he's created a circle of your family and your friends to walk you through this life and encourage you. So remember, trust in God with all your heart. Stay in love with him. Even when things seem impossible, know that God is good all the time. Have a grateful day. Good morning. Today's scripture reading is from Genesis chapter 37, verses 1 through 4 and 12 through 28. And Jacob dwelt in the land wherein his father was a stranger, in the land of Canaan. These are the generations of Jacob. Joseph, being seventeen years old, was feeding the flock with his brethren, and the lad was with the sons of Billa, and with the sons of Zilpah, his father's wives. And Joseph brought unto his father their evil report. Now Israel loved Joseph more than all his children, because he was the son of his old age, and he made him a coat of many colors. And when his brethren saw that their father loved him more than all his brethren, they hated him, and could not speak peaceably unto him. And his brethren went to feed their father's flock in Shechem. And Israel said unto Joseph, Do not thy brethren feed the flock in Shechem? Come, and I will send thee unto them. And he said to him, Here am I. And he said to him, Go, I pray thee, see whether it be well with thy brethren, and well with the flocks, and bring me word again. So he sent him out of the vale of Hebron, and he came to Shechem. And a certain man found him, and behold, he was wandering in the field. And the man asked him, saying, What seekest thou? And he said, I seek my brethren. Tell me, I pray thee, where they feed their flocks. And the man said, They are departed hence. For I heard them say, Let us go to Dothan. And Joseph went after his brethren, and found them in Dothan. And when they saw him off, afar off, even before he came near unto them, they conspired against him to slay him. And they said to one another, Behold, this dreamer cometh. Come now, therefore, and let us slay him, and cast him into some pit, and we will say, Some evil beast hath devoured him, and we shall see what will become of his dreams. And Reuben heard it, and he delivered him out of their hands, and said, Let us not kill him. And Reuben said unto them, Shed no blood, but cast him into this pit that is in the wilderness, and lay no hand upon him, that he might rid him out of their hands, and deliver him to his father again. And it came to pass, when Joseph was come unto his brethren, that they stripped Joseph out of his coat, his coat of many colors that was on him. And they took him, and cast him into a pit, and the pit was empty, there was no water in it. And they sat down to eat bread, and they lifted up their eyes and looked, and behold, a company of Ishmaelites came from Gilead with their camels, bearing spicery and balm and myrrh, going to carry it down to Egypt. 
And Judah said unto his brethren, What profit is it if we slay our brother and conceal his blood? Come, and let us sell him to the Ishmaelites, and let not our hand be upon him, for he is our brother and our flesh. And his brethren were content. Then there passed by Midianites with merchantmen, and they drew and lifted up Joseph out of the pit, and sold Joseph to the Ishmaelites for twenty pieces of silver, and they brought Joseph into Egypt. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Have you ever had one of those days when nothing seems to work out? Of course you have. We all have. In fact, this last weekend, I drove my mother up to Santa Rosa in Northern California to visit my older sister and her family. And my younger sister also drove with my nephew for the weekend. And on Monday afternoon, we planned to go and have a hike and a barbecue at Armstrong Woods. Unfortunately, when we arrived at Armstrong Woods, the ranger informed us that they were having problems with hornets and that it would be impossible to cook. Fortunately, we are, if nothing, adaptable. So we went for our hike, and then we drove out to Bodega Bay to have our barbecue out there on the beach. Unfortunately, while it was 90 degrees in Armstrong Woods, it was 55 degrees at Bodega Bay with gale force winds. Now we managed to see the humor of the moment and we cooked our food and had dinner and had a good time, but it was hysterically miserable. Now you might be asking how we were able to laugh and how we were able to enjoy that experience. And the answer is really pretty simple. We were with family, and that was really all that mattered. And we were able to go home knowing that a warm bed and a new day awaited us. Now, some people and some experiences aren't quite so simple. Dr. Isra Sablani and Ahmad Sibay were out on the streets of Beirut this week. And they were posing for wedding photos. And Sibe was in her wedding gown. And when they heard this explosion in the distance, and they didn't think too much about it as they got ready for the next photo and they entered into their pose. But that's when the awful sound of the second explosion erupted behind them. And the sky turned black. And the shock waves ripped through the square shattering windows and knocking the couple from their feet. The couple is okay. The photographer is okay as well. But they were lucky. Hundreds are dead. Thousands are injured and displaced. And the port of Beirut is inoperable while large sections of the city were damaged from the explosion. It was not a good day. And nothing turned out right for so many people in that city. Let's be honest. 2020 has been a year where nothing seems to work out. Between the COVID-19 pandemic and the resulting economic struggles to the polemics over race relations and racism, this year might be the worst year we have experienced in our lifetime. And it is still being played out. We are facing job insecurity, health anxiety for ourselves and for our loved ones, financial insecurity, isolation, loneliness, disappointment, anger, betrayal, suspicion, contempt, and fear. Shall I go on? I'm not going to go on because you get the picture you know precisely what I am talking about. Joseph did too. Joseph is the main subject of this morning's scripture reading. He's the favorite son of Jacob, who is now known as Israel after his showdown in the octagon with God. He's the youngest son, 
a snitch. But Israel doesn't care. He makes his son a special robe of many colors, and it was obvious to his many brothers that he was the favorite. And they hated him for it. Now, Joseph doesn't seem to help himself in all this either. He tells them about dreams that they will bow down to him and they will be subservient to him. And it reaches a point where the brothers can't take it anymore. And as they see him approaching them in the fields, they begin to hatch a plan. And it's not a good plan. It's a plan to kill him. Now, his older brother intervenes and suggests that they throw Joseph into this empty cistern and put animal blood on the coat and tell their father that Joseph was killed. And the other brothers agree. And, of course, they don't realize that Reuben is planning on coming back in the night and rescuing Joseph and restoring him to his father and gaining his father's favor. Now back to the gathering of brothers out with the sheep. As Joseph comes up to them, they pounce on him, they strip off his coat, and they throw him in the cistern. And later, when a Midianite caravan comes by, they sell Joseph for 20 pieces of silver. And Joseph is taken away to Egypt to be sold as a slave. Now, I want you to close your eyes and imagine Joseph's day. It begins probably with his father praising him and blessing him and celebrating him and then sending him off on an errand to go and find his brothers. And he makes his way out to see them. And maybe he even goes with joy only to have them pounce on him, throw him into a pit, and then sell him off to slave traders. His day begins with everything great, and then it ends with him in captivity, heading to a foreign land and an uncertain future, wondering if he's ever going to see his father again. It's a horrible, terrible, no good, very bad day for Joseph. And while I'm guessing that none of us has ever been sold off into slavery by our siblings, I'm sure we all can relate to Joseph. We all have had those days, those weeks, those months where everything seems to go wrong. We've lost loved ones, lost jobs, been furloughed, been betrayed, been excluded, been shamed, been victimized, been lied to, and been cheated. We've all been there. This morning's reading ends with Joseph in the pit. But if you keep reading, you'll find out that Joseph doesn't pout or give up. Instead, he works hard and he holds on to the face of his father. And he actually begins to prosper wherever his journey takes him. He prospers even though he is falsely accused of inappropriate behavior with his master's wife and being thrown into prison. And in all of this, somehow, He keeps his faith and believes that wherever he is, that God can work through him and that God is still with him. So I'm looking at you all right now. It would be easy to complain and pout and rage at God for not coming through for you. It would be easy and natural and maybe even healthy for you all to do this. But the truth is you don't get to stay in that place the sooner you can begin to look to God and ask what next, the sooner you begin to find your way out of the pit and out of your captivity. When it all falls apart, you might feel alone, but with every fiber of my being, I believe that you are not alone. I believe God is with you, even when it doesn't seem like it. Even when it seems like God is absent, you can be assured that God is at work. Over and over and over in Scripture, we see this pattern get played out over and over. And we see it in Joseph's story. But 
That's for next week. For now, just remember that I don't think that God causes bad things to happen to you. Joseph's brothers obviously chose their actions, and while Joseph didn't deserve to be sold off into slavery, his own choices have their repercussions and their outcomes, which play their part into his misfortune. God didn't make this happen. But as we shall see, God is still at work. Even when people make horrible choices. So life may not be fair. And despite your best efforts, hardships and disappointment will befall you. 2020 simply sucks. But whatever happens to you, keep the faith. And God is not only going to bring you out of the pit, you'll see that God is at work and will bring you out of the situation even when it all goes wrong. So make sure you turn in, tune in next week as we wrap up Joseph's story and we see what God was cooking up through the years. We are going to see that even though it was hard and even though at times it seemed that God was absent, God comes through for Joseph. And I believe God will come through for you. When it all goes wrong Sometimes it's best to just sit down Don't look at your reflection It's not time to wonder how the world goes round It's okay to wake up And I want to get out of bed Somehow, someway That coffee still gets me The day is that tomorrow That worried you so much yesterday don't you worry, cause you better, you better get me again, somehow, somehow, some way. Being together makes us strong, when we're together, days, days aren't so long, I look into the clouds and That keeps me going for a long while It's okay to wake up And I want to get out of bed Somehow, someway I promise you that coffee will get it made Today is the tomorrow that worried you so much yesterday But I promise you, you bet Good morning. Pray with me if you will. Magnificent God of compassion, this week has provided us so many new examples of our fragility and our need for you in our lives. We seek the solace only you can provide in a time of unrelenting stress, populated by terrifying images of new calamities filled with fresh anxiety. Connect us to those whose needs are greater than ours, that we might be instruments of your peace. Console and heal the displaced, the injured, and the mourning in Beirut, and all who were affected by Tuesday's blast. Encourage those along the eastern seaboard impacted by the latest tropical storm, who in the midst of the pandemic are now without power. Comfort those in our own community who are hurting from loss and grieving, those suffering from ill health, those who are isolated, and those reckoning with leaving the workforce or who remain unemployed. 
protect the frontline workers, the medical personnel, and essential service people who are risking their lives to keep people alive, to keep lines of commerce open, and to keep us safe. Assure those whose aspirations and goals continue to be altered by this season of safer at home that the time will come when we will rejoice together again. As the scripture says, this too shall pass. Guide our hearts as we continue to navigate the turbulence of social injustice and clear our minds so we are not distracted by trivial concerns that would divert our attention from the root problems. Heal our nation. Help us to wise up and rise up. Lord, strengthen us. Keep us close to you. Remind us of your presence in our lives at every turn. As the dreamer dreams, give us wondrous visions of what we will accomplish as the beloved community. As the dreamer awakens, fortify us with the Holy Spirit to act on that vision to glorify you. And now let us take a moment to lift our most private needs to our God. And now let us join together in the prayer that Jesus taught the disciples, daring to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We've come to a time of announcements, but we would first like to give you an invitation to the offering. You may give to the church one of three ways. Text to tithe, where you text the amount you'd like to give to the number on your screens. It's a one-time setup, and it's fast and simple. You may also go to our website at www.nohofumc.org and click Giving. And you can send your tithes and offerings to the church office via mail at 4832 Tahunga Avenue in North Hollywood, 91601. And we thank you so much for your continued giving. Ways to Volunteer the North Hollywood Interfaith Food Pantry's contact information is on your screens. Please contact Barbara Javits to volunteer in person. The pantry needs non-perishable food items, especially cereal and foods high in protein, hygiene items like shampoo, soap, lotion, deodorant, feminine hygiene, diapers for babies and adults, fruit from your trees. All of these items may be dropped off at First Christian Church on Colfax and Moore Park during distribution days, which are Mondays and Fridays from 7.30 a.m. to 10 a.m. Volunteers will be on hand to unload your car. If you would like a volunteer to stop by your home to do a pickup, please contact our church office and let us know, and we can send someone to your house to do a contactless pickup. Ken Craft would like to give a big thank you to everyone who responded to the call for new sheets last week. They received such a huge number, they are now requesting brand new towels that will go to a bridge home shelter in Van Nuys. You may donate by going to Walmart or Target and purchasing towels there and getting them delivered to the Pacoima site at 11076 North Street in Pacoima, 91331. You may also continue to make donations at www.hopeofthevalley.org. Thank you so much again for your support. If you are in need of prayer or any assistance, please contact us at nohofumc at gmail.com. We will be able to get you connected with Pastor Steve. And with these things in our hearts and our minds, let us conclude this morning's worship service by singing our closing hymn, number 534, Be Still My Soul.
As we reach the end of our time together, I hope that you heard that promise. That promise that God is with you and that God is at work. I may not know exactly what you are going through right now, but I know that we are all going through stuff in this strange, strange year. Look around you and try to see the things and the opportunities things that God is doing and the opportunities that God has for you. I encourage you in prayer to turn and ask God, what next? What do you have for me, God? And I hope that you'll begin to find how God is working for you and for the sake of the whole world. And I hope that you'll join us again next week as we bring Joseph's story to a close. But for now, may you go forth confident in the presence of God and know that Christ goes before you and behind you, that Christ is at either side, that Christ is above you and below you, and that you can step forward in peace and with grace. Go in love. Amen.